Coming up, can an iPad be your only computer? Next on Ask the Tech Guy. Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. I got a great question today from Michael. He lives in Quito, Ecuador. He's an expat. He says, and I have an iPad Pro 10.5 uh, Lightning port. That's one of the older ones, 2017, he says. Uh, also a MacBook Pro 2018, but I find the iPad sufficient for my needs. What advantages are there with a the new iPad Pro with a USB-C port? I was without my MacBook for some weeks. I found the iPad quite sufficient. Should I trade in for the iPad with the USB-C connection? Would there be any advantages? USB-C seems to be the future. Lightning connectors, are they of the past? He says, I'm hoping to travel the inside passage, Bellingham to Alaska next year, and to take many photos. He says, I have a Sony camera, a DSC RX 10 M3, and a DSC RX 100, excellent point-and-shoot camera. I hope to use the iPad for editing. I'll be turning 80 next year, so this trip may be it. <laughs> oh, don't say that. If you have the time to respond, I'd much appreciate your views and advice. Thank you, Michael. And it's a very timely question now uh, because the iPad, of course, has been updated. The new iPad Pro and, more importantly, I think, iOS 13.4 has added some very important features. Let me first address the iPad Pro. Pro. This is the uh, uh, last year's, actually 2018 iPad Pro, One, the first one with the Type-C connector, and I'm still using it. We bought a new one. Mike uh, uh, Sargent will be reviewing it. Uh, in fact, I think he already has now on Hands-On Tech, but I can give you a little hint. It's really not a much improved version of the 2018 iPad. The only difference is the camera on the iPad. That you're not going to care about. You have great cameras, much better than a camera on an iPad. They've added LiDAR, good for augmented reality. I think that's a gimmick. At least it will be until there's software to take advantage of it. And a better front-facing camera, too, for selfies or Skyping. I think even the older 2018 iPad, like mine, is just fine. The new iPad doesn't have a faster processor. It has a little bit more capable GPU. Not a lot of differences. So save money. Get 28, the 2018 iPad Pro if you want. If you want to get the latest and greatest, get the uh, new iPad Pro. But here's the good news. All iPads will benefit from a feature built in to iOS 13.4, and that is mouse and trackpad support. Now, I'm using, I don't yet have the uh, new uh, Magic Keyboard that Apple's offering. I would definitely save my money for that. That'll be available in May, and I'll tell you why that makes a difference. But you can use any keyboard. I'm going to use Apple's Smart Keyboard and any trackpad. I'm going to use a Apple's old Magic Trackpad uh, as a mouse. You can even use a regular mouse plugged into the Type-C connector. And there's advantage number one of Type-C is it's a standard connector, which means you can connect anything with a Type-C interface, including keyboards and mouse. I'm using this as a, as a Bluetooth device. Now, watch, because what's cool about this is we now have a pointer. See that little dot? Instead of using an arrow, I think Apple, quite sensibly, is using a dot to show you where the pointer is. And notice, it's smart. When I hover over a folder, the folder kind of comes to life, I know where it is. And it works also in other applications. So if I'm, for instance, taking notes, let's, uh, let's start Notepad here, and I'm taking notes, when I hover over text, the uh, pointer turns to a text editor. Notice this, when I hover over a button, the pointer turns into the button itself. See that? I think this is a very sensible way of using a pointer uh, I think even more intu intuitive than a, than a mouse. This is some text I'm typing here. And notice when I move the mouse pointer over the text, it turns into a uh, cursor line, which makes it very easy to select text. 
uh, to copy it, to paste it, to move it around. There's some additional gestures. There's a three finger swipe up. Let's see if I can get it. I'm I'm still I'm still learning these. Maybe it's a two finger. Maybe it's a one finger. <laughs> You've got the dock if you swipe down. You have a, a lot. I think Apple's done a brilliant job of there we go of uh, controlling the pointer with the trackpad. It isn't just kind of glommed onto iPad OS. It's beautifully integrated. And to me, that may make the biggest difference in making the iPad the equivalent of a desktop computer. It is a real full-fledged computing device, in my opinion now. In fact, in many ways, it might be better than your Apple laptop. The processors that Apple's using in these iPads, the A12 and the A12Z Bionic, are as fast, in some cases, faster than the laptop processors they're using. Uh, I think with mouse now and the usability interface, I think this is very close to an elegant, new, state-of-the-art computing platform. You've already used the iPad as a replacement for your MacBook and been happy with it. You'll be even more happy with pencil support, trackpad support. And when Apple comes out with its new cantilever design uh, magic keyboard, in, uh, in May, it'll be expensive for this 12.9 inch, which is the size I like for my iPad that really makes it a laptop. It's $345 in additional expense. It will work with the old iPad Pro as well as the new iPad Pro. It's going to give you some really nice features. One, you'll have much more flexibility in the angle and the height of the iPad. That cantilever design means that the screen can be moved around a little bit more flexibility, with a little more flexibility. Plus, it's a real keyboard, the same keyboard they're putting on the MacBook Air and the 16-inch MacBook Pro, not this kind of weird, you know, uh, fabric-y keyboard that they have on the smart keyboard cover. A real keyboard, a real trackpad built in, integral into it, and the cantilever design. Plus, it'll have a power charging uh, Type-C connector on the hinge in the cantilever. That magic keyboard really looks like the final piece of the puzzle, turning the iPad into a real computer. Well, there's one more piece, and that's the software. Unfortunately, Apple has set a standard for the cost of software on iOS that's very low, $0.99 cents to $5. And real developers making real productivity tools, that's Probably not enough. You're starting to see some $99 programs, OmniFocus, for instance, um, that might really make up the difference. I expect we'll see more pro stuff. But let's talk a little bit about photo editing because that's the number one thing you want to do. That's one area where the iPad, I think, is almost at parity. There's some very good photo editing programs uh, for the iPad. There's Affinity Photo, which is excellent. There's Pixelmator Photo, which is excellent. There's even Photoshop and Lightroom. Not not completely full-fledged versions of the desktop uh, apps, but pretty darn close. And I think that makes it a very powerful tool. Pixelmator Photo was $5 only. Now, see, that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible illustration. But there is a lot you can do with Pixelmator Photo. It's extremely powerful. It has all kinds of incredible tools. And honestly, I feel like this is an amazing um, a photography tool. Once you get used to it, especially if you get the pencil, I don't think you're ever going to want to go back to a non-touch uh, laptop or desktop uh, computer. This is just really fabulous. So at least in that area, the one area you really care about, I think that the photo editors available on the iPad probably are even better than those available on the Macintosh. Certainly, they're as powerful. And there's a lot of additional things you can do when it comes to video editing. Um, you know, it's not Final Cut Pro, but there's some very good choices, including the free iMovie that comes with the iPad Pro. LumaFusion is a third-party program. Premiere Rush also very, very good for video editing. I think we're at the point now where you could safely say that the iPad Pro is a full-fledged computer, even though Apple doesn't want you to call it that. And honestly, for your trip uh, uh, up to Alaska, I can't imagine a better computer to bring. Lightweight. Very compact, very portable, and and frankly, fun and easy to use. And perfect for your Sony cameras. You can handle the raw images from both the RX10 and the RX100 with absolutely uh, no issue. I actually edit my Sony camera raw, the ARW files, from my A7 Mark IV. And as big as those files are, 61 megapixels, the F iPad Pro is now fast enough to handle them beautifully. Cannot... I wasn't able to say this until the last 
few months, and I think really with the addition of iOS 13.4, it is clear the iPad has become a really great computer. There are still people who will want the trucks, the iMac Pro, the Mac Pro, the MacBook Pro, but for the rest of us, I think the iPad Pro is an excellent choice, and you picked a perfect time to become an iPad Pro user. May I make one recommendation? If you're going to start using the iPad, make sure you watch iOS today. That's our iOS show. Micah Sargent and I cover the iPad extensively. As I mentioned, we'll have that new iPad, and the minute those new keyboards come out, we'll have those, and we'll be talking a lot about Pro apps, pro-level, pro-grade apps on the uh, iPad uh, platform, because I, I think that's really the future of computing in many ways. So, great question. Your timing is very good. I hope you have a wonderful time uh, going up uh, through the uh, passage, the inside passage, uh, from Bellingham to Alaska. That sounds like an amazing... Is it a hike? It must be a hike. What an amazing trip you're going to go on. Um, I hope when I'm 80, I'm doing that, too. Have a, have a wonderful time. And thank you for asking Ask the Tech Guy. Ask the Tech Guy today brought to you by LastPass. We love LastPass from access to authentication to passwords. I use it at home. LastPass manages every entry point to your business so you can mitigate risk while improving employee productivity. LastPass goes above and beyond to ensure security for all its users, including the fact that your data is encrypted and decrypted only at the device level. But increased security doesn't have to be more complex for your business or your employees. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. And that's it for this week's Ask the Tech Guy. I'm Leo Laporte. If you have a question, I'd love to hear from you. Email askthetechguy at twit.tv. And I'll see you next week. Bye -bye. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email askthetechguy at twit.tv. Thank you.